Hey Wampers and welcome back to a new video. Welcome to a new follow along tutorial in which I'll teach you how you can make a simple but static gramophone like this one. You will learn how to combine shapes to form more complex things and also how to work with curves. So let's dive straight in. So first off, let's hover over the top bar where we find our primitives. Here we want to choose a cube to start with. If we hover over the side of the cube, we can scale it down to make it more flat. And now, since we have our primitive selected, we can open up its properties menu at the right, where we can choose a color. Let's go for a nice brownish color and also a bit of more roughness on it. Now we just copy the same shape and scale it a bit smaller from the middle, but a bit higher again and then we combine those two shapes together by giving them a bit of gooping on the right in the properties menu. Maybe go with around 20, like this there, nicely blending together, forming a more complex shape. Now we do the same again. We copy this shape again, but this time we, we use another option, which is the roundness. We round our object up and you can see it forms a different kind of connection to the other shapes, but we actually want to get rid of the gooping here and just just play around with that and building shapes by copying them, changing them up a little bit, making some thicker, some thinner, and yeah, like this we're building our way up, we're doing the same here again, we're just making it a bit thinner but scaling it high up, and yeah. I'm also speeding this up here a little bit just because it is basically combining shapes again together. I'm copying the same shapes, making them a bit bigger, a bit smaller here and there, grouping them together or changing the roundness. This is something that you can really play around with to see what you would like to do with your own shapes really. We can also go ahead and change the color of our middle part here, maybe switch it up a little bit. And I think that's already looking quite good. I then continue to add one more shape to it that I'm making fairly flat and a bit smaller again, giving it a bit of a different color, a bit darker as well again, and this will be the top of the wooden foundation. Now I think this is looking quite good, but I want to add one more thing and that is some feet to it. So for that I'm just copying the middle part and I'm also leaving that in that color so we have a little bit of variation there. And then I'm turning on the snapping on the top right. This helps us to align our shapes to the edges of the other shapes. As you can see here, it perfectly snaps to the edge of our shape here. And then I'm just copying that shape, bringing it over to the other side. Then I'm selecting both of those shapes in the scene list and copy them together to bring them to the opposite side of that as well. And yeah. I would say that's the finish for our wooden stand. Feel free to bring in even more detail if you would like, but I think that's a good base to go with from here. So we can group this together into a union, which we can then also name. And we can then also lock our union. This means we can't then select any of the shapes in this anymore. So we don't accidentally click on one of them, which is very helpful. And now we can go on and create the vinyl. For that we get out a new cylinder, we scale it very flat because now first off we're making the foundation like the, the bottom part of which is holding the actual vinyl and for that we want to turn it maybe into a bit of a silverish tone, I guess you can go with any color you like here but I feel like they're mostly like silver the bottom part. So we give it a bit of metalness as well, maybe we round it up slightly and bring down that roughness a bit as well and then we can just copy this exact same shape again. We are making it a bit bigger because now the vinyl is over it and a bit more flat as well and we, ch we change the color to a more darker tone like a black kind of tone because vinyls are usually fairly black. Um, but then now we want to cut out the middle part because then just not one flat cylinder. So for that we are copying the exact same shape again. We are scaling it thinner, like smaller, and but then we're making it higher so we can properly cut it and also get rid of the roundness for that. We turn it into a negative in the object's properties menu and scaling it to our liking. 
Now we see that it's cutting a full hole even through the holder below. So we change that by selecting our vinyl and bringing it on top in the scene list. Because your negative will only affect all the shapes that are above it in the scene list. I'm then copying our negative and turning the copy back into a positive, changing the color to a more silver tone. This will be the outer ring of the inner ring. <laughs> Um, also bring it onto the same level as the rest of the vinyl and then I'm pretty much copying this shape and making that a bit smaller and giving it a different color to create that detail of the inner ring. You could also use the snapping here to bring it onto the same level. And now the last thing that's missing here is the actual holder and for that we just copy the same shape again, scale it very very small and make it a bit longer so it's sticking out and I also give this a more of a silver color again. So I think that's looking really nice so far, now we can also select all of our shapes that we created for the vinyl in the scene list and put it into union as well. Alright so far so good, now let's continue by getting out a new cylinder to create a connection part which connects the speaker and the lower part of it. Um, for that I am roughly placing it at the side and scaling it quite a bit thinner. We can also type in straight up values which makes it more accurate if we want to. Um, after that I'm now copying this shape, making it a bit bigger and scaling it very thin. Like this we are creating a bit more detail in it. I'm then also copying this part again. You can also zoom in to just have a bit of a better look on what you're actually doing. Um, I'm doing the same thing here to create a bit more detail. I'm rounding this up to around 60-70% making one at the bottom, one at the top. I think that looks quite nice. And then I'm copying our cylinder again. Um, and at the top in the properties menu, you can actually change the shape of the primitive to another. And by doing that, we keep the same position and material, which is nice for the workflow. So here I'm just rotating this 45 degrees angle. You can do that by holding down shift by rotating. And now we have this part where the actual speaker will go in. So I'm grouping this together into a connection part union. And now we come to working with curves. So we get out the two point primitive, we delete the second point, and then we go into the curve settings first. Here we can choose the primitive that we want to work in this curve with. And I'm also increasing roundness and density straight away. That is very important for the curve so we can actually see what we're doing because the density dictates out of how many shapes the curve will be built up with. And I'm also scaling this cylinder to 10. When we go to the actual curve point, this is where we want to work with now. First off, we are roughly placing it so it connects to the connection part. This doesn't need to be perfect at all. And then we are copying the, the same point by holding down Alt or Control Z, Control V. And here we can experiment with making it a bit thinner or thicker and then slowly scaling it up. Because now we are building up that speaker part that becomes very big at the end. So now I'm creating uh, a fourth point and that one I'm scaling quite a lot bigger, like very, very big, because now we want to have that transition where it increases um, to go more outwards. And here I'm also making it a bit thinner, maybe even rounding it up a little bit because I feel like that helps to create that smoothness of it. You can still see that it's built out of shapes, so we'll fix that in a bit. And then the last point, we make one more point just a bit above that, and that point we make really huge. So this is the base that we want to work with here. Um, to smooth it out and to not see the shape so much, I just increase the goop strength by 5. You can add just a little bit and that usually makes your curves quite smooth. And yeah, I think this looks quite nice. Now the next step is to copy this curve that we just created and turn it into a negative. 
Now this is obviously subtracting all of what we have here, um, but we're deleting the first point of the negative. And then we are dragging out the last point even more because now we are creating this hole in it. And here we also want to increase the size of the last point until we have that shape of a speaker. And I'm just really experimenting with how it looks by moving the individual curve points of the negative here. Scaling some a bit bigger, some a bit smaller. And yeah, just until we have the right shape of it, what feels good for this. I think this looks quite nice. Now to connect it a bit smoother on our connection part, we can copy one of our detailed cylinders that we made um, in the beginning and just overlay it here. Like this would make sense because a lot of connection parts have that kind of um, yeah, overlap there and it makes it a bit more smooth. It would also look quite a lot better once we have the same material on both of them. So we can name this union as well and close it down. Now what's missing is obviously the lower part that connects it to the actual vinyl. So for that I'm copying the first curve that we made here by dragging it outside of the union so it's its own thing. And then I'm deleting all the points except the first one, just so we have roughly the same position and same settings that we already chose um, for our speaker part. So I'm just dragging this down here now. And now you will see me build up that part um, for, the, for the lower end. I'm rotating the curve points that I'm copying. I'm scaling them slightly thinner the further I go. And then I'm bringing in this really nice curve at the end, which gramophones usually have. And then also connect it to the wheel and the needle that connects with the vinyl then. So for creating those, I'm getting out a separate cylinder, just scaling it around the right size and then, you know, just rotating it so it fits the actual curve that we made before and then also bring in a bit more details with the same technique that I used before as well. For the needle, I basically just copied the same cylinder as well, but turned it around, made it really flat and thin and small. And yeah, that's about it really. And then it's time to apply the material to it. For that we want to select everything that we want to apply to in the scene list. The good thing is this works for unions as well. So we select the connection part, the speaker and the lower part of it. And now we can go to the materials in the top bar. And here we can also just apply a community material if we want. But I usually create them myself, for that we click on the plus icon and here we can now change the name, change the color and then to a more golden tone we want to apply some metalness as well. I also give it a bit of roughness so it's not fully shiny but maybe a bit more used as well over the years, um, making it slightly darker as well maybe, I think that looks quite nice. And yeah, then we can also select the middle part uh, that we made for the connection part and choose a different color for that, same as the wheel. The cool thing is once you created and saved those materials, you can apply it to anything that you want really. So play around with that, change the color, change the metalness, roughness, and yeah, just play around. It's really fun. I then also went ahead and created a holder or stand to the back part as well as a crank. And here I basically use the same techniques with curves that I've shown you before. So feel free to put in a bit of your own creativity and try it for yourself. And lastly, we are then going to the presentation part. For that, we are turning off the floor grid at the right in the lights and environment panel and then going to the top bar to choose a different backdrop. For the backdrop, I usually go for a color that's complementary to the main color of our creation or something that's quite contrasty in general. So play around with that, make it lighter or darker, warmer or colder, whatever fits your creation and what you think is right. And then we also come to the global lighting. The global lighting is very important, choose it carefully because it changes everything about your creation, how your color, your shadows, your light, your brightness, all of that looks different depending on the global image you're choosing. And then we can go on and play around with the exposure. This is the brightness of the global image 
And additionally to that, we can then add some individual lights that we can also grab from the top bar. And here it's also very fun and experimentative to play around. You can use spher spherical lights with different colors, for example. You can let them come from the side and have a warmer or a colder color. Or you can highlight specific parts of your creations as well or cause reflections. It's really, there's a lot of possibilities with the lights and feel free to play around a bit with that as well. And then once we're fully happy, we click on the share button at the top where we can publish it. Here we can choose the thumbnail. This is how it will be presented on the discover page. We can type in the name and add some hashtags. Those are labels where people can click on to find your creations. And you can also choose your copyright settings. If you don't want anyone to remix or use your creations, you can change that there as well. And also share it to the share your warm channel. And yeah, we would love to see your creations on the Discover page. Feel free to share them with the community. I hope it really inspired or helped you to create something yourself. Also, in the next video, I'm going to show you how you can texture this model using Procreate. And with that, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.